of the blocks that are sunk into the ground over here as pre-1933 in Germany. There's anti-Semitism here and it's not unique. Uh, there's anti-Semitism in many places all over the world at this point. 1933 though, things change a bit faster in Germany because the Nazi party are elected and this anti-Semitism becomes institutionalised. 1935, the Nazis introduced the Nuremberg Laws, laws that make life for Jewish people very difficult. Jewish people have to cut their hair a certain way, have to leave school at the age of 14, not allowed to ride on public transport, have to sit on yellow benches in parks, and so on. Um, the next stage, 1938, November the 9th of that year is Kristallnacht, uh, the beginning of the pogrom, the attack against the Jewish people. It's on this night that towns, uh, villages, cities, all over Germany, people are encouraged to smash the windows and burn down places of Jewish business and Jewish worship. Uh, here in Berlin, 84 out of 90 places of Jewish worship were completely destroyed. In the morning, uh, it became illegal to be Jewish, so people were sent off to work camps. 1938, things get a lot worse. Sorry, 1942, things get a lot worse. In January of that year, the Nazi Party introduced a policy, uh, the very famous title, the final solution to the Jewish question. Uh, this is when uh, a lot of concentration camps that haven't already kick in and become death camps. It's when we see the Nazis becoming as obsessed as possible with killing as many people as possible as quickly as possible. It's where we see the rise of places like Auschwitz where over one million people die. Now, um, I have been throwing out a lot of numbers. One million, six million, eleven million. Um, historically, those are roughly the accurate numbers. But I think that they, whilst huge, are, are meaningless. And they're meaningless because they are that big. I don't know what 11 million of anything looks like or feels like, let alone 6 million or 1 million. Um, and that's why, I think, that's why I think this memorial becomes successful again. We're going to be walking through here shortly. When you do, you'll notice that these blocks get very close together. You end up separated from the rest of the group. Put yourself in a space where you're on your own. And then the ground sinks and the blocks rise. It becomes very dark, very cold, and very disorientating. Hopefully it puts you in a position where you can start to think not just of the interpretations I've been talking about, but your own as well. Um, on top of that, I also think it puts you in a position where you can think about individuals, because that's what happened with the Holocaust. It happened to 11 million individual people. If you want a better feel for that, there's a museum on the other side of this memorial um, where they have fragments of letters sent between concentration camp victims and their family and their friends gives you an insight into their lives and hopefully it lets you see that these 11 million people are no longer a statistic, but they are real people, okay? So, thank you for listening throughout all of that. Thank you for being very respectful. I do want to uh, move through the memorial now. Uh, I encourage you guys to head down in there, take some wrong turns, take some photos, uh, think about what we've been talking about. As a point of reference, I am going to be heading straight over to the very far corner of the memorial. I want to meet you guys over there in about two minutes, okay? So, quick time here and then if you have any questions or comments we'll discuss it all at the other side. See you in two minutes.